Almighty God, by whom alone kings reign and princes decree justice, and from whom alone cometh all counsel, wisdom, and understanding, we, thine unworthy servants, here gathered together in thy name, do most humbly beseech thee to send down thy heavenly wisdom from above, to direct and guide us in all our consultations. And grant that we, having thy fear always before our eyes, and laying aside all private interests, prejudices, and partial affections, the result of all our counsels may be to the glory of thy blessed name, the maintenance of true religion and justice, the safety, honor, and happiness of the queen, the public weal, peace, and tranquility of the island, and the uniting and knitting together of the hearts of all persons and estates within the same, in true Christian love and charity, one towards another, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This honorable house now resumes its sitting. Um, there are a lot of distinguished people to welcome this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to start by welcoming back to the house our own and very distinguished house leader. House leader, I'm starting by welcoming back to the house this evening, our distinguished house leader, who has received several honors while on government business away, doing the business of the nation. But we welcome him back and are grateful for all the, the leaps that he has taken on our behalf in his various travels. Also, this evening with us, um, we have a delegation from Cayman, and the delegation is led by the Honorable J. E. Banks, who is Minister of Planning, Agriculture, Housing, and Infrastructure, and with him is House Speaker Makiva Bish Bush. Um, um, if the president were here, we almost claim um, House Speaker as our very own. He's always here and supportive of us. With, with him is Dwayne Seymour, Permanent Secretary, Lydia Nicholson Macassar, Macassar, who is the Deputy Chief Officer in Agriculture. We welcome you especially as a female and Demoy Nash, Senior Policy Advisor. We welcome them heartily and they have joined us in the Well of Parliament as members of their own parliament in Cayman. Also with us this evening are, um, is Tonyan Leila, Miss United Nations. We welcome you this afternoon, and we welcome all our visitors, both those who are here and those joining us on the stations and by video links this afternoon. We trust we have the sectoral debate, and we trust that you will all find the sitting of the House an informative one. Call of the roll. Mrs. Holness. Here. Mr. Bartlett. Present. 
Mr. Holness, Dr. Clark, Dr. Chang, Mr. Shaw, Mr. Samuda, Ms. Grange, Mrs. Williams, Mrs. Malau Fort, Dr. Tufton, Mr. McKenzie, Mr. Chuck, Mr. Vaz, Mr. Warmington, Mr. Charles, Mr. Green, Mr. Morgan, Mr. Hutchinson, Mr. Terry Long, Ms. Smith, Dr. Dunn, Mrs. Cuthbert Flynn, Mr. Main, okay. Mr. Main, Mr. Davis, Mr. Witter, Mr. Brown, Dr. Brown Burke, Dr. Charles, Mr. Chin, Mr. Clark, Mr. Cousins, Ms. Crawford, Ms. Daly, Ms. Davis, Mr. Goldin, Mr. Graham, Dr. Guy, Ms. Hamilton, Ms. Hannah, Mr. Henry Kitts, Mr. Henry, Mr. Hilton, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Lawrence, Ms. Lee, Mr. Miller, Mr. Montague, Present. Ms. Morrison, Present. Mrs. Nita Garvey, Mr. Paulwell, Mr. Phillips, Dr. Phillips, Mr. Robertson, Mr. Mr. Rob Mr. Robinson, Mr. Siblist, Mr. Slowly, Mrs. Vaz, Dr. Wheatley, Mr. Williams, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wright, Mr. Holness. Um, members, my sincere apologies. I did say we have many distinguished guests with us this evening, and our guests, this is so long. I sincerely apologize to Ms. Rosa Lazala, who is the director of plant health of the plant health department in the Ministry of Agriculture in the Dominican Republic. We welcome we welcome you and I know with her also is an interpreter, Miss Annette Anna Anna Asanali. Okay. We welcome you and I sincerely apologize. We're not always used to having so many distinguished guests with us all in one sitting. We welcome you heartily and I suspect you're here to listen to the distinguished Minister of Agriculture as he makes his presentation this afternoon. Welcome you all. Statements by ministers. Uh, Madam Speaker, there being no statement by minister today as per the practice in relation to the sectoral debates that we have. Uh, but just to, on my own behalf, to, to thank you, Madam Speaker, for your kind comments with regards to the work that the team of the Ministry of Tourism and myself managed to do on behalf of Jamaica over the last three weeks. And just to indicate that we have really uh, brought back uh, in this difficult recovery period a strong tourism drive which is going to see Jamaica getting as close as 90% of the arrivals of 2019. The, the investment climate continues to favor Jamaica, Madam Speaker. And I'm proud to say that over the next few weeks, we will be seeing some investors from the Middle East coming through to look at some of our products, and particularly the new destination of St. Thomas that we are working on. And finally, Madam Speaker, air connectivity is the heartbeat of tourism. 
And I was very pleased that Jamaica was able to have, and we are the first Caribbean island to have inserted fully in the booking engines of major tour operators in the Middle East, as well as to have Jamaica being sold directly by one of the largest airlines in the world, Emirates Airlines. And we're very proud of that achievement, and we look forward to being able to build on that and in time to have direct flights from Jamaica to uh, the Middle East and vice versa. But more so, to have Jamaica be established as a hub from which air traffic will now move into the Caribbean and then transport it from here to other parts of the region. So, Madam Speaker, I just want on behalf of the team to thank you for your kind remarks and to indicate that Jamaica's tourism is in good hands. <laughs> and Welcome home, Minister. <laughs> Announcements. Laid on the table of the House today are the following. Ministry paper number 35 of 2022 entitled Annual Performance Report 2021-2022 for the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries and the Auditor General's Department audited financial statements for the Parochial Revenue Fund for the year 2004 to 2005 and 2019 to 2020. Bills brought from the Senate, petitions, papers, reports from committees, notices of motions given orally. Minister Clark. Madam Speaker, I beg you to, to give notice that at the next meeting of the House, I'll move to introduce and have read a first time a bill shortly entitled the Bank of Jamaica Amendment Act 2022. Questions and answers to questions. Motions that may be made at the commencement of public business requiring notice. Motions relating to sittings of the House. Motions for leave to introduce bills. Presentation of bills without leave of the House first obtained. Public business. Uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, I, I beg for a recommittal to um, allow the Minister of Finance to um, take the question of motions, um, motions that may be, sorry, motions um, to be given orally. He did. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I, for a minute there, missed that while we were trying to deal with the issue of question and answer to questions, which the, the, the member not being here, and I wanted to make that point very clear that when ministers are ready to answer questions, we, 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 exactly, but, but only that to make the point that Prime Minister from time to time, opposition members make the, the claim that questions are not being answered. I just want to make the point that when questions are ready to be answered, the particular member who asks should be in the House. So, um, Madam Speaker, on the matter of public business, the, I beg to move for the continuation of the debate on the appropriations at, as it relates to the sectoral element of it. And the uh, speakers today will be the Minister of State in the Ministry of Industry and Commerce and the Minister of Agriculture. Well, I see the Minister of Agriculture has come in now. So we will have him speak first, as is the order on the paper. Um, we should have had a third speaker, um, but I'm advised that uh, the member is here in good spirit, but is otherwise uh, not able to present today. So, <laughs> so, 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 Madam Speaker, I, I, I beg to move now that the Minister of Agriculture the Honorable Pernell Charles Jr. be asked to make his presentation. Ah, 
our members. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, the message that was sent to the leader, the house yesterday, that the member from Southwestern Andrew couldn't speak today because she had COVID. What? Yet she was out demonstrating yesterday and she's sitting in the house. Does she want us to catch a COVID or something? I strongly suspect no, no. that the responsibility of the no, level of Madam the member Speaker. would not allow her to do that. Madam, Madam Speaker, because the member has had the effrontery to make the statement that he has, I am not going to sit and not respond. So I crave your indulgence for my response. I sent a note to indicate many weeks ago, last week, that I was suffering from COVID and I was recovering. I made a request not to speak today because, because I had been ill, I needed some additional time. I thought it was granted in good faith. And although I am here, I'm not prepared to speak. And as I had asked for permission. I find it disgusting, to say the very least, that a member could stand and behave in this manner. But then again, I expect nothing better. To invite the Minister of Agriculture to make his presentation, and Fisheries to make his presentation. Madam Speaker, COVID or no COVID, we are all here. Together. But let me first, my, my, I crave your indulgence, Madam Speaker. It was, let me first ask for your permission to, to rise from a seat that is not normally my own. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Speaker, my job is simple today. I'm here to, to do three things. To highlight the gains made over the last year, to acknowledge the challenges ahead of us and our plans as a country to address them, and to lay out a vision, a vision for a new national campaign engaging every Jamaican in the movement, Madam Speaker, to transform agriculture and fisheries going forward. In our 60th year of independence, I am, Madam Speaker, aware of the enormous task given to me to drive agriculture and fisheries through these trying times. If anything, the past two years have shown us that with God in the midst, we can and will overcome any obstacles that come our way. Madam Speaker, we are confronting one of the greatest challenges in this century since the Great Depression and one of the worst pandemics to be recorded in history. Jamaican farmers and fishers stood firm against all odds as the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries worked assiduously to ensure the sector boosted food production to advance food security and to prepare our country for any potential fallout. I want, Madam Speaker, to firstly acknowledge the Almighty for the strength, the blessings, wisdom, and guidance that he has given to me to successfully navigate this journey. I'm also grateful to our Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, for his leadership. And not just leadership, Madam Speaker, but leadership in the most perilous times. He continues to steer us through these times, and I want to say, Prime Minister, thank you for the confidence and trust placed in me to work with you to lead this integral portfolio. Madam Speaker, I owe a debt of gratitude to my wife, children, parents who I know are watching, siblings who are always by my side, extend, extended family, friends, 
for their steadfast support and understanding as I seek to balance the several important and challenging areas in my life. Up at 4 a.m. this morning, taking care of my daughter, and at 6 a.m., trying to take care of my duties as a minister. It's a balance which those of us in this house realize is challenging, and we could not do this alone. So to you, I say thank you for the sacrifices you've made for me. Madam Speaker, without a doubt, we have a lot of work to do. And I want to thank my executive team at the ministry, my constituency, constituency team who are here and who give their all every day, with or without me, around to make sure that our collective efforts are meaningful and impactful. I appreciate you. I want to acknowledge my colleague ministers, all parliamentarians, the staff and agencies, and all who work and collaborate with the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Madam Speaker, right behind me is a giant of a man who I have to acknowledge for his hard work, tireless efforts, and support. My Minister of State, the Honorable Franklin Whitton. Madam Speaker, I could not have asked for a better companion, colleague, and I must say champion. He takes the lead on several integral issues in the fisheries sector, as well as driving the implementation of special projects to include the Essex Valley and Southern Plains Agricultural Development Projects, which are critical projects for the ministry. I want to acknowledge the presence of our colleagues and friends from, Greek, from Grand Cayman, uh, my colleague, Minister of Agriculture, Honorable uh, Jay Banks, uh, the Speaker of the House, former Premier, Dr. McKeever Bush, uh, Parliamentary Secretary, Mr. Seymour, Deputy Chief Officer of Agriculture, Mr. Mrs. Macassar, and Senior Policy Analyst, Mr. Nash. Their presence here today, Madam Speaker, is a representation of the strength of our partnership and going forward we intend to make that partnership even stronger. From the Dominican Republic, Madam Speaker, we have Ms. Rosa Lazala, Director of Plant Health at their ministry, Ms. Annette Insanali, Director at the University of West Indies Latin American Caribbean Center, and let me also Acknowledge, Madam Speaker, at this time, if I could, our, we call her our farm queen. Uh, she is, to me, a member of our Youth Advocate Council, a young champion, young farmer, who last week made this country prouder than we could ever be by winning the Miss United Nations pageant in New Delhi, India. Madam Speaker, so many to thank, and so many interventions that could have derailed our presence here today, if not for the hard work of my permanent secretary, Mr. Derman Spence, and the dedicated team at the ministry, as well as the leadership and staff of all divisions and agencies of the ministry. I want to thank them for their dedication and commitment, as we thank the hard-working farmers, fishers, stakeholders, investors, and every single person who is committed to Jamaica's food security agenda. It is your hard work and vision that are a constant source of motivation for me. My chairpersons and board members who are here, we thank you for your vision and leadership as well. Madam Speaker, as we drive agriculture and fisheries, it depends on the partnerships that we have, and it is critical then uh, to recognize the food and agricultural organization the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, the World Bank, and the several others who we work together with. And I want to also, Madam Speaker, just before I dive into the substance, just to recognize that my constituency, Southeast Clarendon, happens to be one of the spaces in our country with the, more, the most available idle arable land. 
Yeah. Madam Speaker, I want to indicate that it has been an honor to represent the people of Southeast Clarendon. And in a short time over the year, we have been able to assist 300 students or more with tuition fees, uh, grants and book vouchers, more than 700 receiving tablets or vouchers. And Madam Speaker, I'm proud to say that we have a long way to go, but we have more than 200 that have received housing support, 118 listed to receive assistance in short order. And we continue the infrastructure development in Southeast Clarendon, having completed our water system in Salt River, and now seeing an influx of investors asking to come to that area to put up entertainment parks and business so that the people can have employment and prosperity. Madam Speaker, we have a massive youth development program with training, scholarships, workshops, and other activities to engage our youngsters. And this Labor Day, we will host the largest community fair ever seen in these parts at the Rocky Point Community Center, with a raft of social services being offered. And I've already identified areas to introduce a range of dynamic activities. Madam Speaker, uh, we can't say everything, but I'll just highlight that in recent times, we've been able to do, across the constituency, eight roads. We've been able to install street lights in Hayes. We've been able to distribute more than 5,000 care packages along with masks and sanitizers. And Madam Speaker, we have restarted our small business and sports programs that will see our largest community engagement, as I said, on Labor Day. All of this to thank the constituents who placed it who placed their trust and confidence in me twice over, twice over, Madam Speaker, in only six months. And I still think that that is, uh, uh, that's a record. <laughs> Madam Speaker, as we advance through this crucial point in our history, there are two modes of operating, fight or flight. And we here in Jamaica are choosing to fight as we push agriculture and fisheries with a multifaceted program and food security strategy to fuel production and growth and establish Jamaica as the food mecca of the Caribbean with the right structure and the right strategy. It is the goal of the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries to continue to optimize the use of all of our resources and partnerships and to pursue a mandate to increase the sector's contribution to national growth and development. Madam Speaker, we will turn challenges into opportunities, and we will ensure an adequate supply of food, stable prices, and access to healthy, nutritious alternatives as much as we can for every Jamaican. Firstly, Madam Speaker, let me address the main concern at this time, the issue of Jamaica's food security. I want to state that we have developed a strategic plan to safeguard against disruptions of inputs and potential fallout in the sector. The ministry, through our divisions and agencies, is rapidly expanding the production of our starches, high fiber foods, roots, and tubers such as yam, sweet potato, cassava, banana, breadfruit, and plantains, which are to be grown and processed to be used as viable alternatives to anything that we can import to consume. Madam Speaker, regarding identifying alternate sources of protein, we have increased our production of fish, small ruminants, pork, even for myself as a Adventist, <laughs> poultry, <laughs> poultry, and even rabbit, Madam Speaker, in anticipation of any fallout that may occur, occur due to vagrant factors. Additionally, we are calling for continued investment in the agriculture and fisheries sector, encouraging investors, because this is where we will see the greatest multiplier that you can imagine. The message, Madam Speaker, is production over importation. And we are encouraging our investors as we support boosting production to meet our local needs and to prepare this country for what is to come. Madam Speaker, 
The challenges presented by the global pandemic are foremost on the minds of every single Jamaican. We are seeing and we are feeling the effects of the ongoing pandemic, coupled with the political unrest between Russia and Ukraine, impacting the sector negatively. And critical commodities such as wheat, flour, as well as shifting prices in the wrong way for commodities like meat and fish, caused by rising input prices, including fertilizers and feed, as well as high energy costs. All of these things, if not most, out of our immediate control. Further, adverse weather conditions, which include floods in some regions and droughts in others, have also affected local production over the last year, and we anticipate in times to come. Madam Speaker, we are cognizant of this, but we are also aware that the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, in all of that, accounts for 18% of jobs in this country. Even more important is the critical role the sector plays in providing Jamaicans with access to fresh and nutritious food through the crops, livestock, and fisheries subsectors. It is not my intention in any way to undo the work of my predecessors or uproot the framework that has been established. And I take the time to acknowledge all ministers of agriculture and fisheries who have put in the work. We will not be uprooting, Minister Green, the new face of food, but rather we will build on the existing structures and policies, one government, expanding those that need further development and implementing systems where we are lacking. <laughs> Madam Speaker, if the picture of success is clear and success is based on execution, then how we start is clearly very important. So today, we will outline the plan for the sector to continue to build on the growth that we have achieved, to bolster the agriculture and fisheries sector's output, and to ensure that Jamaicans have access to affordable, nutritious, safe, and fresh, locally produced foods, while providing, Madam Speaker, jobs, building livelihoods, and contributing to the country's GDP. As such, I'm announcing, Madam Speaker, a national strategy aimed at food security called Grow Smart, Eat Smart, which builds on existing policies and programs of the ministry with a major thrust to drive us to eat more wholesome and nutritious foods and to grow, but not just grow, to grow strategically, optimizing our operations by using an empirical approach, introducing innovation and technology and advancing research and development towards better operations to develop and ultimately achieve better results. We will grow smart and eat smart. Madam Speaker, we can utilize every inch of our landscape in this country, not just to plant, but to be planting with a purpose and to ensure that we unlock our full potential through improved efficiency and reduced waste. Madam Speaker, the Food Security and Agribusiness Council that was established is a joint public and private sector working body uh, that was to focus on maximizing the potential of our country's agricultural sector. We are going to drive that council forward and ensure that that council is effective in monitoring, assessing, and addressing the issues that arise from the sector in a comprehensive way, all with a view to protecting the interests of the Jamaican people. Presently, Jamaica needs a critical mass of medium and larger scale profitable agriculture-based enterprises. And we need that if we're going to form the foundation of a diverse new rural economy and if we're going to supply healthy food to the country. Madam Speaker, this is critical for us to have the agro-processing businesses being advanced. 
and for us to supplement the agricultural contributions of the small subsistence farmers. Madam Speaker, that council is going to be critical. And in my meeting with the PSOJ, who co-chair the council, we are committed to ensuring that we drive agriculture to have a major positive impact on our economy. And it is going to develop initiatives uh, to enable the reimagining of the current structure and the operation of the agribusiness sector. And this will be done by developing a strategic agenda towards improving agricultural climate resilience through modernization, production efficiency, scale, and consistency. Globally, colleagues, operating an agribusiness is a very risky enterprise. And in Jamaica, there's no exception, no exception. We have our challenges uh, with several things, including pre de larceny, as well as our geographical location, which makes us vulnerable um, to hurricanes and other climatic events. Further energies will then be concentrated on addressing these issues and on financial planning, including resource allocation uh, towards technology, strengthened infrastructure, innovation, improved governance, and effective policy making. Madam Speaker, consideration will also be given to incentives, advocacy, and applied research, will serve, which will serve to catalyze the establishment of profitable commercial agribusiness. This will be a primary focus for us, and this council was formulated to advance that. And let me reiterate, Madam Speaker, that we will be deploying all resources at our disposal and mobilizing the dormant resource of the council to contribute to bolstering the sector. This is an undervalued gem in our arsenal, and we will be reviving it and moving it forward to fight uh, the, and secure our food. Madam Speaker, so far we have been able to manage the challenges faced uh, due to good work of the ministry and those who have worked hard to ensure that we have critical partnerships and relationships with farmers, stakeholders alike across the country and region. And I must mention that this sector has been on a growth path unforeseen over the last 10 years. And this gives me hope, Madam Speaker, that we can provide Jamaicans with what they need. And Madam Speaker, the national food security strategy then of Grow Smart and Eat Smart will be focused on the following areas of priority. Crop production, climate smart practices and technologies, access to finance, which is critical because as I said before, it is easy for you to get a loan for a Benz rather than a tractor. That must change. We will focus on developing protection and advancing and expanding the insurance for our farmers with a focus on crop insurance and predator larceny. Development also, Madam Speaker, of a national farming trust and expanding the fisher folk and farmers insurance. The campaign will examine the current culture in agriculture and see how we can transform how we think and how we operate. A resetting of our own mindset. Madam Speaker, it means then that we will be providing more leases for idle agricultural lands. We'll be advancing more linkages and partnerships. And you will be aware, Madam Speaker, that recently we handed over leases to youngsters um, and also handed over leases for critical areas in our Mango Agropark to investors, all with a minimum of $20 million. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we will be focusing in this campaign on driving financing, technical training, and support for farmers. We're focusing also on the interlinkages between ministries, departments, and agencies. We will be focusing on driving the linkage with health, updating the current food and nutrition security policy to boost consumption of nutritious local foods. 
We'll bind together with education, revamping the school gardens for, um, initiatives and providing inputs to our school feeding programs. <laughs> While launching also, Madam Speaker, the hydroponics pilot in high schools, which our Minister J.C. Hutchinson has been doing for some time. <laughs> we'll be working with national security, launching, as we have recently, a working group to focus all of our attention on tackling predator larceny. Madam Speaker, this has been a focus of mine and will continue to be, because all of the gains that we can make and all the gains that we have made are at peril or in peril if we do not cauterize the scourge of predator larceny. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we're going to focus on market-driven opportunities for farmers and fisher folks. And we will also be giving support to access for agricultural inputs, particularly at a time when that's most needed now as prices are erratic and increasing. Madam Speaker, some of the major initiatives which in detail will be handed to you in our digital um, sectoral book. But some of the major initiatives that I will highlight for the year coming will be the full enforcement of the animals, diseases and importation regulations which will see us requiring all cattle to be identified with their air tags and corresponding passports. So we therefore urge all the cattle farmers to have your cattle tagged. That program will be enforced as we go forward. The campaign, Madam Speaker, will be launched jointly with the Ministry of Health. The Grow Smart, Eat Smart campaign will be launched jointly with the Ministry of Health and Wellness around the issues relating to nutrition. And the campaign will target expanded production and consumption of our locally grown crops and value-added production. Our aim then is not only to grow targeted crops that bring the best yields and results for farmers, but we'll target also the lowering of the island's import bill, while we also support farmers and chart a continued growth path. Madam Speaker, we will be boosting agriculture uh, in the primary and secondary schools with the programs at a cost of some $15 million through the supply of vegetable gardening packages, and we will be advancing and expanding on the agro-parks across Jamaica, producing more mango, more ackee, more breadfruit, and avocados, as well as other crops for export. When you drive, Madam Speaker, from Mineral Heights down to Hayes, going on to Rocky Point, the vision is for you to not look to the left and the right and see bush. <laughs> we want you to see orchard crops. We want you to see avocado, breadfruit, aki. We want you to see peppers. We want you to see production. The vision for our country is for us to utilize what God has given us in the way that he wants us to do. <laughs> Madam Speaker, for us to do that, we will, be, we will be instructive in the use of technology. And it is important to note that the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries will launch a rather mobile application, an automated biometric identification system to bridge the gap between farmers and technical support, generating digital information from farmers to shape support and programs to access farm records and rather guides for new and young farmers. Madam Speaker, we will use data. We will utilize data and information to define the projects and policies as we go forward. And I'll tell you, Madam Speaker, some of the information that we see uh, will also assist us in knowing how best to communicate with the farmers and fishers. 
because that database and information will tell us about literacy. It will tell us about your background. And so when we are talking about getting booklets to hand out, we have to find the most effective way to communicate with our people. So we'll be utilizing booklets, utilizing digital, utilizing audiovisual, and every way to make sure that we pass information to those that are ensuring food is on our table. <laughs> Madam Speaker, research and development, critical. And let me say that the Bordels Phase 1 um, has been completed or is in completion with a budget of $105 million, um, including the construction of a small ruminant building to house 150 animals, the renovation of our milk testing laboratory, the procurement and installation of herd management systems for livestock, and all of those will be important as we move forward. Phase two of the rehabilitation and development um, of the research stations will be undertaken at an estimated $5.4 billion to see the rehabilitation of selected facilities across all five of, of our research stations. And Madam Speaker, let us not, let us not, well, let us understand rather the importance of research and development as we go forward. Research is going to allow for us to define the genetic improvements, to define the innovation, to define the soil fertility, the seeds, so that when we put soil in seed, we're not just scattering, but we are being precise in knowing what kind of seed must go in what kind of soil for us to have the maximum yield. Madam Speaker, we want the best for our country. And as I say, if we want different results, we've got to think differently. Madam Speaker, we will also see to the establishing of the research and development stations for aquaculture. And we must never forget aquaculture and fisheries because that area, Madam Speaker, is where we perhaps have the greatest room, the greatest room for us to improve. We will have the establishment of the Research and Development Station for Aquaculture, which has a scope for private partnership, um, and we'll also launch the Pelagic Fish Initiative. We'll also see to the launch, Madam Speaker, of the wheat flour substitution program. Let me say that again. The launch of the wheat flour substitution program with support from the government of Cuba to target breadfruit and cassava to create gluten-free flour as a healthy alternative to wheat. <laughs> Madam Speaker, to all Jamaica, if you haven't tried cassava flour, try it tomorrow. Nothing tastes good, sir. Madam Speaker, we look on backyard garden kits. We're going to further expand our very successful backyard gardening program this year as we continue to encourage the growing of vegetables and small stock, especially in urban spaces. Don't tell me you don't have space to grow. Because in 2022, you can grow in a pot. You can grow on your roof. And I dare say, Minister Shaw, you can grow in your room. This is... What? <laughs> this is a means... This is a means for the average householder to supplement and complement both their family diets and income in these very difficult times. Madam Speaker, we are very proud as a ministry to watch on social media our very own Prime Minister and many others as they display proudly their success in their own backyard garden. And he showed me his tomato, Madam Speaker. Yes. And so, Madam Speaker, we intend to distribute some $15 million worth of backyard farms and more through RADA on a first come benefit. And we're hoping to expand that so all Jamaicans can participate. Madam Speaker, let's move quickly. A lot to do. Madam Speaker, animal feed. Animal feed, Madam Speaker, accounts for approximately 70% of the cost in animal production. And so recently, our industry has been challenged because of the rising cost of animal feed. 
and the cost of input ingredients to make that feed. As a part of our efforts to reduce input costs, our Bodles Research Station has established 42 acres of Mombasa grass. This grass will be used to make hay and silage and sell to small farmers at cost. And this is a part of our food security program uh, to support increased production while also serving as training for our small farmers. We want Jamaica to produce its own input to keep our costs stable. Madam, Madam Speaker, additionally, Guyana has confirmed its interest in intensifying bilateral cooperation with Jamaica, and I'll be there in two days. And within the cooperation of the CARICOM Agri-Food Systems Agenda, Jamaica will pursue trade and investment opportunities with Guyana and local companies in the area of growing corn for Jamaica, for our livestock industry there. And in 2020, Jamaica imported approximately 170, 137 sorry, million US dollars worth of corn, primarily from extra-regional sources. So this cost is expected to significantly go down once projects like that in Jamaica and in our region get underway. <laughs> Madam Speaker, another area of concern is the wastage of feed, Minister Terry Long, which will be addressed in a project by the Jamaica Dairy Development Board, where we will enhance the formulation of local animal feeds in both silage and pelletized forms. Madam Speaker, I want to just raise a few of the new initiatives. There are so many. Uh, but I'll, I'll highlight a few, and I expect that colleagues will go through the digitized version. Madam Speaker, the Grow Smart, Eat Smart key projects that are geared towards achieving food security will include uh, National Agriculture and Fisheries Day, very important as we celebrate our 60th anniversary as a country this year. I think it is integral that we have a National Agriculture and Fisheries Day um, be declared and celebrated. It is important for us to highlight the importance of the sector, and not just farming, but also our fishers. Uh, given the fact that, despite the many challenges, Madam Speaker, uh, this sector had a close to 8% growth over the last year. And the sector in the last year recorded its highest levels of production for domestic crop yield, surpassing 770,000 tons for the first time in Jamaica's history. Madam Speaker, for the similar period, the fisheries sector achieved a 20% increase in fisheries production, with marine capture fisheries increasing. And we should, we should also applaud them. Madam Speaker, it is our intention to make sure that we monitor as best as possible the global shift so that we can drive and ensure that we increase our production in the next year. Madam Speaker, I just want to mention a very important initiative called Planting with a Purpose. It will fall under the Grow Smart, Eat Smart theme. And what is that going to be? We're calling on all Jamaicans, Madam Speaker, particularly as we head towards Labor Day. Uh, we want to launch on that day the planting with a purpose drive. Uh, we have reached an agreement with one particular uh, private sector company so far, Noranda Bauxite, and we have also met with the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Minister Samuda, uh, to start the preliminary work on this initiative. Uh, we are areas of Bauxite lands that will not be mined but, are, but that are within that area are going to be used now to grow orchard crops as part of our food security initiative. Madam Speaker, these acreages when planted will at the same time contribute to the three million trees planting program. And so what this is to drive is an interconnection, a nexus, collaboration, as we encourage all Jamaicans to plant at least one fruit tree this Labor Day. Our parish rather offices 
provide fruit trees and seedlings, and they will do so in support of this initiative. Please note, I think you should try to get there as quickly as possible, because it's a first-come, first-served basis. Madam Speaker, um, <clears throat> we mentioned before the gardening school program that is currently run by the Jamaica Forage Club. However, under the Grow Smart, Eat Smart theme, the ministry is proposing a farm in schools program as a joint initiative with the Ministry of Education and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. This initiative will complement the efforts of the school feeding program. Additionally, it will see the government adopting a national, a national farm in school policy aimed at teaching students the dynamics of agriculture and fisheries and promoting nutritious eating from an early age. The ministry will then seek sponsorship uh, from public and private sector stakeholders through the Adopt a School Farm initiative. Madam Speaker, what is the future of farming uh, without future farmers? It's very important. And so we have partnered with and will partner with the Budding Farmers Jamaica Group. Our founders, Mrs. Grace Henry, uh, Ms. Michaela Ann Henry, and Matthew Henry uh, have worked with us through their Budding Farmers Grow Club program, and we will be working with them uh, with the aim of ensuring that this program gets across the country as much as possible. We hope that this Budding Farmers Grow Club will solve the critical component of food security by introducing to our children in early childhood and primary school the fundamentals of not just farming, but about the business and technology around farming. And I know that when I say that, some will wonder, but you're never too young to be exposed. And believe me, Madam Speaker, we have tested this on a few five and six-year-olds, and they have grasped uh, the knowledge and understanding better than most. This will represent a deepening of our existing educational program and use agriculture now to reinforce literacy and, and mathematical concepts uh, to the participants of the program. The Budding Farmer program is expected to have a pilot phase for one year. Thereafter, it will be reviewed for its feasibility and based on the viability of the pilot, Madam Speaker, we hope that it will receive the support of Cabinet to be expanded. Madam Speaker, I just want to quickly move to agro-processing um, as, as the initiatives are important. The Agro-Parks program for the Ministry uh, is intended to facilitate expansion of the productive capacity of the sector by building out infrastructure. And now, Madam Speaker, we have the production of selected crops and livestock directed towards import substitution and replacement. Madam Speaker, our starches and high fiber foods, like the yam, sweet potato, and cassava, as I use, uh, will be the focus as we not only plant and cultivate, but we will be inviting and encouraging our processors to find many unique and dynamic ways to innovate. Madam Speaker, we have a strong brand. Jamaica's name resonates across the world. If we can connect our production to our processing and our processing to our brand, Limitless potential. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I just want to speak quickly about fertilizer. Addressing the increased cost of fertilizers and availability issues due to the global supply shortage, uh, based on everything we see taking place now, will be a critical part of our strategy as we go forward. Madam Speaker, we have started implementing a multifaceted approach, which includes one, sourcing fertilizer from other sources aside from Russia. Recently, Madam Speaker, you know that we received uh, fertilizers which are being distributed now. And this was the third donation. And I see your eyes, Madam Speaker, and I have assured you that your, your constituency, which is filled with farmers and others, can, can be assured of the commitment for distribution across the country between this week, next week, and the week to come, including MP Morrison and MP Cuthbert Flynn and MP Green and Minister Green. I could, I could, feel, I could feel all the eyes on me at that moment. The most honorable uh, Juliet Holness as well. Madam Speaker, 
<laughs> All, also for Southeast St. Anne. Yes, yes. And, and we are sending extra fertilizer for your potato farmers. We are putting mechanisms in place, Madam Speaker, for increased commercial production of, hear me now, organic fertilizer from composting from household materials. Madam Speaker, this is an existing project that we will be ramping up on a national scale. Madam Speaker, if it is that fertilizer costs too much, then Jamaica must pivot and we must utilize the mechanisms that will allow us to use what we have. Yeah. Madam Speaker, we are working with the main fertilizer manufacturer also to guide research for the development of new blends that will see a more efficient use of fertilizers and therefore cut the cost to farmers. Right now our farmers, Madam Speaker, sadly, are utilizing sometimes the wrong fertilizer and sometimes too much fertilizer. It is causing burning of our soil and it is constricting our productivity. Madam Speaker, in this national Grow Smart, Eat Smart campaign, we'll be going across the country to help our farmers through RADA and through AIC to understand the better operations so they can know how to use a fertilizer. <laughs> Madam Speaker, it is our goal to reduce the dependency on the synthetic fertilizer. It's very important for us to use it, but we want to use it well and use it efficiently. Madam Speaker, we'll be using local materials because it has been proven to promote higher yields of agricultural crops and also healthier soil structure. Madam Speaker, the FAO has assisted with the sector greatly with technical training, funding for programs and initiatives, and I know that the partnership will continue to provide support on key focus areas for the upcoming year in line with their organization's thrust towards food security for the region. And let's just discuss a few areas of focus of projects this year. We're going to focus, Madam Speaker, on the value chain development for strengthening food systems. And I tell you, Madam Speaker, it's important as we talk about, about boosting production, if we intend to truly boost not just production, but the positive results. Madam Speaker, the member's time is uh, expired. I beg to move that his time be extended by 15 minutes in the first to allow him to complete his presentation. May it please you, Madam Speaker. Just before I seek your permission to extend the minister's time, I apologize at the beginning of this sitting to the team from the Dominican Republic in um, welcoming them to the Houses of Parliament. I now apologize to my own sister, Val Riviera, who is the CEO of JBDC and the members from the Ministry of Commer Inve Industry, Investment and Commerce, who are also here this evening to support their minister in his presentation. And there are other faces that I see in the gallery that I know are, I have not mentioned in support of the Ministry of Agriculture, and they are well known to me, and I welcome all our visitors in the gallery this afternoon. Minister, your time for completing your presentation has been approved by the members of the House. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, uh, as I said, and let, let me try my best to summarize as there's a lot to go through. Madam Speaker, the vision for us, we put it this way, we have to start thinking differently. We have to start thinking about our soil fertility. We have to start thinking not just about irrigating, but even the pH balance of the water that we use to irrigate. I have to start thinking about all variables that are going to impact the yield and the results and the output. And when we produce more, which we are producing more, 
We have to think about what then to do so that we don't waste what we produce. Right now, Madam Speaker, we do not have the infrastructure in place to be able to store and preserve what we aren't eating and processing. And so a big part of our focus will be on extending the value chain and introducing cold chain storage um, and working with partners to make sure that we can bring to Jamaica the infrastructure to extend the value chain of our products. <laughs> Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, all of this is critical as we also look on this not just as producing food but building resilience and sustaining livelihoods because as we produce we also produce jobs and jobs are important for families, important to the parents so that they can get an income to send their children to school. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to announce that through the hard work of the Ministry in partnership with the FEO, we'll be undertaking the following projects in the year to come. Improving phytosanitary food safety and market access opportunities along the hot pepper value chain with the funding of 152 million Jamaican. The improvement of rural livelihoods through resilient agri-food systems, another 152 million or 1 million US. The Rocky Point Fishing Beach Improvement Project to include landing equipment, a fish cleaning facility, storage facilities, mangrove protection, as well as trading for users. And this project is valued at 45 million Jamaican and was approved way before I became minister. So be careful. So, so, so the people out there don't... Yeah, I can hear yes, yes. So let's, let's just be clear. The identification of two technical projects valued at $37 million for the implementation across the sector. And Madam Speaker, another of our strategic food security actions is partnering with the FAO to implement the Food Loss and Waste Reduction Program. Let me say that again. Food Loss and Waste Reduction Program, which focuses on strengthening the value chain operation. That will speak to a strategy for reducing food loss along the value chain, for supporting our farmers to reduce post-harvest loss and extending produce shelf life to ensure enhanced farm and household cash inflows. Madam Speaker, when Usain Bolt wants to run faster, in his training, he doesn't just learn to be stronger. He learns to be more disciplined and strategic because it's not all about going forward, it's about what's holding you back. And in this country, one of the greatest things holding us back in agriculture is our waste. And so, Madam Speaker, these projects are going to focus on ensuring that even if we don't produce not even one more crop than produced last year, we will have double the amount in results if we can use what we are now wasting. Madam, <laughs> Madam Speaker, this project, as I said, will be funded by the FAO, the tune of $38 million. And Jamaica is also pleased to include in a project under the South South Cooperation Program, which is a partnership with FAO China and the community of Latin America and Caribbean states, valued at $2 million US and aimed at strengthening post COVID 19 recovery policies and programs, at promoting digitization and e-commerce strategies among farmers and small and medium enterprises and providing inputs into pilot situations for digitization of rural areas and for us to have the participation of all of those spaces. Madam Speaker, I am very proud of the work of the farmers last year. Madam Speaker, production over domestic crops increased significantly from 697,679 tons in 2020 to 770,456,000 tons in 2021. That's a reflecting a growth, Madam Speaker, of 10.4% in that period during a pandemic. That means that while we were on lockdown, our farmers were out at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., working, the soil, toiling, 
so that we could produce. Madam Speaker, I want to commend all our farmers, the Jamaica Agricultural, Agricultural Society, Miss Lee, and our Rural Women's Association, and all who have ensured that they provide record levels of production in our country. Madam Speaker, we are calling on every single woman, man, boy, and girl in Jamaica to come on board. This is about all hands on deck as we steer towards Jamaica, not only producing more, but doing more with what we produce. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I want to swiftly move through some of the important areas. Livestock. Madam Speaker, the livestock sector has been one of the hardest hit over the last year with concerns of shortage and increased prices. But I'm pleased to report that chicken meat production is on the rise. Madam Speaker, chicken meat, chicken meat production rebounded from a decline in 2020 and production moved from a little under 124,000 kilograms to moving towards 125,000 kilograms in 2021. Uh, Madam Speaker, I was able to work with our large companies, JB, CB, and to work with the contract and small farmers, and we can see the positive results in that regard. Egg production also has been on an upward trajectory, which is good news as eggs are, Madam Speaker, an alternative and affordable source of protein, and we are going to be focused on driving increased production, particularly at a time when we are concerned as a country on what we can get um, imported. So if it is that we hear that countries are becoming protectionist and that they may not be willing to send certain foods or inputs to Jamaica, why not depend on what we have? Why not increase egg production? That's where, that's where we're going to be focusing, Madam Speaker. We'll be focusing on ensuring that we guarantee our country a consistent supply of meat, of eggs, of all of those alternatives to wheat. And Madam Speaker, in the end, that will inure to self-sufficiency for Jamaica. Working. It's a win-win for all concerned, Madam Speaker, as we facilitate the consumer up the value chain with increasing employment and disposable income um, in a more nutritious product for a healthier lifestyle. Madam Speaker, we will move to treat with sugar and other traditional crops. I won't go into too much of it. I'll ask colleagues to, to read through the digitized version. Um, and we will see, Madam Speaker, in my visit to Worthy Park last month, uh, I was able to be observed and exposed, rather, to their expansion. And what we notice, Madam Speaker, is the critical component in what makes something fail or succeed, such as sugar, is management management. It's working in one place and not in the other. And that is what Grow Smart, Eat Smart wants to advance. The more precise form of management and operation around how we use what we have. Madam Speaker, we'll be driving sugar um, in terms of the transition now of those lands that were used for sugar and now idle to ensure that we don't have idle land waiting for sun to burn it, but rather that we put in place the mechanisms for the transformation of those lands, whether it is aquaculture, other crops, greenhouses. We are doing the analysis now, Madam Speaker, to make sure that every inch of this country will be contributing to productivity. Madam Speaker, Jamaica's coffee industry will also be a focus. 
We know that it has been a major contributor to the country's GDP and social economic activities because of the earning of foreign exchange. And despite the decline over time, we see great potential and we'll be working with the Jamaica Agricultural Commodities Regulatory Authority, JACRA, and RADA to take an approach that will aim at re-projecting coffee. Madam Speaker, as I breeze through, coffee, cocoa, and all of, the, all of the traditional crops will be a focus for the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. In addition, Madam Speaker, some of the priority initiatives will see us focusing not just on crops, but on human development and skills. Madam Speaker, we have significant need to build capacity and to build our skills training programs in this sector. And through RADA, we will be advancing and providing training for farmers, technical assistance, extension services, and production inputs. And Madam Speaker, over the last year, more than 20,500 farmers benefited from the extension program, while almost 13,000 received training in best practices. This we will seek to increase. Madam Farmer, Madam Speaker, well, I could, I could rightfully say, Madam Speaker Farmer, a farmer identification express service will be starting this month where farmers will receive their new identification card within five days. Madam Speaker, there are too many complaints about just simply the RADA process. If I was to tell you, Madam Speaker, how many of my colleagues on that side and this side have said to me, Minister, the issue is RADA. The issue is restructuring RADA. The issue is getting RADA right. The issue is making RADA work for the people. Madam Speaker, I want to tell you, we have some very good workers at RADA. But there also, there's also the need for us to restructure, assess, and identify who, what, where, and when it is being held back. And I want to commit to my colleagues, and I want to commit to this country, that we are going to do everything we can to make sure the restructuring of RADA is not just a phrase on paper, but that you feel and see the difference in how we apply and deliver our services. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we will see a new pre-registration system for farmers that will be launched in this month to capture more farmers in the industry so that they can benefit from the services offered by RADA. We'll be launching our mobile application with RADA to be used by farmers and the public to provide valuable digital information. And Madam Speaker, we'll be working to ensure that Every, every RADA parish manager, extension officer, um, and staff member understands their role and their responsibility and sticks, sticks within their specific responsibilities. Madam Speaker, alongside those initiatives, we'll also continue to push the Agricultural Business Information System, ABIS, which is a web-based information system and National Farmers Registry, which will assist us with data on agricultural production and practices. Um, and it's going to be used, Madam Speaker, to help us uh, to really synchronize how we use data to drive our production. Madam Speaker, let me just briefly speak quickly on boosting production. Emphasis on briefly and quickly. I, I hear you and feel you. Madam Speaker, the Production Incentive Program has been instrumental. It's a major initiative of the ministry that is aimed at food security. And we're focused on now driving the climate smart and resilient approaches to improve crop and livestock production. All colleagues would see that we have left a, a small um, token for you, for you to have a taste of what farmers are producing for you. And I know that you will share with others. And Madam Speaker, it is important that we note that during the financial year, some $1.2 billion expended under this program. Approximately $598 million was spent impacting over 25,000 crops, crop and livestock farmers. And these interventions generated over $3.5 billion in revenue and created employment 
of over 85,000 persons in rural Jamaica. In addition, Madam Speaker, over $40 million was spent on clearing and distribution of fertilizer, uh, which we know is underway. Madam Speaker, we're going to focus on expanding our priority crops. We're going to focus our attention on land preparation. We're going to focus our attention on soil fertility. We're going to focus on driving the incentive support, Madam Speaker, so that land clearing and preparation will be supported so that small, medium, and large, large farmers will have the opportunity to advance their operations alike. Madam Speaker, I want to, I want to quickly, quickly just say that there is great linkages between agriculture and fisheries and climate resilience. And we will have to work with the Climate Change Department to see how we can identify climate financing funding that will help to provide our members of parliaments, our farmers, our support groups and agencies with the funding they need to really build resilience in this sector. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I just want to highlight, for instance, the need for us to balance our economic output with the lives. Member from Southeast St. Anne mentioned in her delivery the proposal to perhaps eradicate the Irish potato uh, farmers, or at least in, in, eliminate or minimize, minimize. Let me, I'm trying to be fair, to minimize, in order for us to focus on the high value added. And it is important, in retrospect, to realize that this agriculture and sector's fishery is not just about boosting production and planting, but that it impacts lives. Absolutely. In your Absolutely. constituency, member, in the last 10 weeks, you would have seen more than $61 million worth of all the Irish potato farmers. We did, we did an analysis. And the Irish potato farmers in your constituency amassed in labor costs more than $61 million. $61 million up that will serve to send their children to school. $61 million and upwards in 10 weeks that is going to help them to be able to manage through these times. I get what you're saying in terms of value added. But value added has to be balanced. Imagine a Jamaica where we were to plant all of our lands with turmeric. We couldn't eat tomorrow. So we have to balance our focus on value added with a focus on our people. We have to ensure that productivity is balanced with people to drive prosperity. I want to invite you. I'm not trying to put anything in your mouth. Um, <laughs> I'm not trying to do so. I'm, 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 I'm being gracious, and I would, would like to invite you, as well as, well, I, I, I'm assuming that Mr. Cousins is still a member for Shadow Speaker. Yes, because I, I, I imagined you charted a course on it. But I've invited uh, my good friend, Cousins, and I invite you as well for us to have a discussion on the details around Irish potato. And this is going to be able to show you another perspective. You may not agree, but it will show you another perspective on that balance that is required. Um, Minister, there I'm is... right now, Madam Please, Speaker. because we Close. have another speaker yes. as well. Uh, Madam Speaker, there's so much to say, but I would say to my colleagues, um, I'll ask my colleagues to just scan the, the QR code um, and you can get a digitized version of our, of our sectoral presentation. Madam Speaker, in that it speaks to the blue economy, it speaks to the other issues relating uh, to our crops and productive operations, and ultimately, Madam Speaker, it speaks to our vision going forward. Colleagues, let me close by saying this. 
All jokes aside, we can't do this um, as government without working together. It is my intention for the Food Agribusiness Council to include uh, member cousins, and I hope that working with him, we will be able to make sure we stamp the valuable connection between public and private sector as we drive towards a resilient agriculture and fishery sector. Madam Speaker, it was Thomas Jefferson who said, agriculture is our wisest pursuit because it will, in the end, contribute most to real wealth, good morals, and happiness. Madam Speaker, the message to our investors must be production over importation. The message to our resilient, hard-working farmers must be to not just grow, but to grow smart. The message to our consumers who depend on us to provide wholesome and nutritious food to their household is not just to eat, but to eat smart. And to all Jamaicans, Madam Speaker, we say, let us remain focused and committed to building on the foundation uh, that we now have so that we can establish truly a strong, sustainable, and resilient agriculture and fisheries sector going forward. Madam Speaker, on both sides of the aisle, on both sides of the aisle, we want the best for Jamaica. That's right. On both sides of the aisle, we want to assure and commit that we have a plan and we will execute to protect you in the face of what is looming. On both sides, we want, Madam Speaker, to be clear, Jamaica, if you want different and better results, we must all then think and act differently. And so in the midst of the storms ahead, we are going to be steady and deliberate and calculated and calm. And we will focus, Madam Speaker, on working together. And in this, our 60th year of independence and beyond, we will successfully transform agriculture and fisheries as it plays its part in building a stronger Jamaica. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I think the Parliament will fully agree that that was a smart presentation. And, um, and of course, he's brought another level of technology to bear on the process by, by doing a first, I think, of um, creating a barcode here with a cue. Well, it, with a single sheet like this. Okay, so he's following you. Right. I thought, <laughs> well, Madam Speaker, what is sure is that the parliamentary this 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 parliamentary this parliamentary administration is really smart. Uh, Madam Speaker, it is my desire for you to invite the member of Parliament for South East St. Mary and Minister of State for Industry and Commerce to make his speech. I now invite, it is my pleasure to invite the Minister of State in the Ministry of Industry, Com Investment and Commerce, the Member of Parliament for South East St. Mary, to deliver his presentation. Madam Speaker, permit me to speak from a seat other than my own. As I rise today to speak, I give God thanks for being here. I am particularly privileged to stand before this honorable house to make my first presentation in the sectoral debate.
to report on the achievements of the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Jamaica's business ministry, for the period 2021-22 financial year, and to outline some of the programs for this new financial year. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I am humbled and honored to have the opportunity, and I must express my sincere appreciation to the Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, for the confidence he has placed in me to appoint me to the esteemed office of the Minister of State in this ministry. I also acknowledge the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator the Honorable Aubin Hill, who since assuming the office in January 2022 has been making inroads in fulfilling this ministry's mandate, which is so critical to the development of our nation. That's right. At the same time, Madam Speaker, allow me to acknowledge the Honorable Audley Shaw, who formerly held the ministerial portfolio and under whose leadership and mentorship I was initially introduced to ministerial governance and whose humility I continue to admire and emulate. I thank my parliamentary colleagues from both sides of the House, That's right. as well as the dedicated parliamentary staff for your unswerving support since I became a member of Parliament. My sincere appreciation also goes to the hard-working team at the Ministry and its 21 portfolio entities headed by Ms. Sancia Bennett Templer, Permanent Secretary, Ms. Michelle Parkins, our, our Chief Technical Director, who together steers the work of the Ministry with very steady hands. As a team, we have managed, Madam Speaker, to achieve much during the year. We have executed a range of policies, impactful programs, and activities as we strengthen our responsiveness and resilience. That's right. All right. Good boy. That's it. To our investors, entrepreneurs, local and international partners, the private sector, as well as the ministries, departments, and agencies of government who have partnered with us during the past year, I say thank you on behalf of the three million Jamaicans who are beneficiaries of our collaboration. My presence in this Honorable House would not have been possible without the loyal support of my constituents of Southeast St. Mary, whom I have committed to serve to the best of my ability. They have loaned me to be present in this Honorable House, and I thank them for their understanding and patience. Right. <laughs> I know. To, my, to them, my counselors, Richard Creary of the Richmond Division, yes. Lenford Danvers of the Castellan Division, yes. Hugh Bryan of the Anata Bay Division, yes. and counselor caretaker Joseph Robinson of the Belfield Division, I express my sincere appreciation for your tireless support. My sincere thank you goes to Garwin Dixon, my close protection officer and Maria Thomas, my special assistant, who have both endured tireless assignment way beyond the call of duty. Finally, Madam Speaker, I express my deep appreciation to my beloved mother, Ms. Eulalie Walters, who celebrated, who celebrated her 93rd birthday just three days ago. and to other family members who have all favored me with their unconditional love, care, and support on my journey. I also would like to recognize my long-standing friend, the founder and CEO of the Caramed Group of Companies, Mr. Glenn Christian, a stalwart and icon in Jamaica, and one of the most recognized business personality 
whose friendship and counsel I value tremendously, and he's here in the audience today. Madam Speaker, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce supports several critical growth-inducing sectors of the economy and remains one of the driver of industrial development in manufacturing and service sector. We also continuously take action to create an enabling business environment to ensure the local industries can embrace the opportunities to grow, flourish, expand exports, and strengthen both the value and supply chain within Jamaica. Consequently, Madam Speaker, during the 2021-22 financial year, our strategic priorities, policies, and programs, and key initiatives were deliberately geared to grow manufacturing, investment, services, commerce, and trade as we recover and reset. Madam Speaker, there's no escaping the effect of the pandemic for the last two years. The world lost lives, livelihood, and the predictability of how we interact in our business, academic, and social spaces. There have been disruptions in the global market, rise in inflation, decrease foreign exchange earnings, as well as food and job insecurity. In the words of Professor Klaus Schwab, executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, and I quote, the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect and to reset our world. A new world could emerge, the contours of which it is incumbent on us to reimagine and redraw, yeah. end quote. So as the world began to recover and reset, Madam Speaker, the ministry also reset its approach as we supported MSMEs, protected consumers, strengthened advocacy, improved standards, increased trade and investment promotion, stimulated industries, and enacted legislation. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, we renewed and with renewed energy focused to create and enhance the business environment for reliance and sustainability. And we can say that the world, and as the world emerges from the effects of the pandemic, we are ready for business. That's right. That's Madam right. Speaker, my presentation this often, afternoon in the Honorable House will not address the full suite of achievements of the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce or all our future programs as the Honorable Minister Aubin Hill will address in greater detail various portfolio matters, including a clear focus on export to produce economic growth, accreditation, medical cannabis, local and foreign investment promotions, and the ease of doing business, the value of intellectual property, the special economic zone ecosystem, and the international financial and business services when he speaks in a nation debate in the Senate. Senate. Madam Speaker, I turn to a very important sector which is supporting the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprise. I must again highlight the importance of a sector that continues to make significant contribution to national development. That is the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprise commonly known as MSMEs. MSMEs are important drivers of the economy equity in income distribution, and sustained economic and social development in Jamaica. Collectively, they play a significant role in the creation and retention of wealth while generating significant opportunities and providing the much needed support for our private sector growth and expansion. Madam Speaker, the ministry and its agencies, primarily the Exim Bank, the JBDC, and JAMPRO have designed and implemented key initiatives to boost the performance and enhance the competitiveness of our MSMEs. A continued problem of the sector, exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, is the issue of financing. To address financing needs of the sector, Madam Speaker, 
the government provided $5 billion in the 2021-22 financial year, and we are pleased with a further $13 billion provided in the 22-23 financial year in affordable loans and credit guarantees. The ministry is also playing its part, and in June 2021, the ministry through the Exim Bank launched a special soft loan funds valued at $650 million at an interest rate, Madam Speaker, at an interest rate of 4.75%, the second lowest in the market. To date, $266.7 million have been approved for disbursement to our SMEs to assist them to rebuild, retool, and to expand their business. Madam Speaker, also through the Exim Bank, even more financing valued at approximately $4.2 billion and constituting 433 short and medium term loans were dispersed to the MSME sectors, including agro processing, manufacturing, box set and aluminum, services, distribution, food and beverage, apparel, and tourism. And at the same time, the Exim Bank continued to provide loan restructuring support and loan rescheduling amounting to approximately $714 million during this fiscal year. So, Madam Speaker, we are making affordable financing available to reset MSME for growth. In moving to strengthen the sector, the ministry has partnered with the World Bank through its subsidiary, the International Finance Corporation, IFC, to undertake a comprehensive review of the secure transaction re regime in Jamaica and made recommendations for an enhanced arrangement to address the financing needs of our MSMEs. Madam Speaker, I am happy to report that the IFC has presented several operational models to establish a digital secondary market platform which would pave the way for capital providers such as banks to actively use movable assets as collateral for MSME financing. The concept would see a virtual platform in trading of repossessed assets along with valuation and related services. We will select the most suitable model during this new financial year and commence the action for implementation. With respect, Madam Speaker, to securities interest in personal property, I am pleased to announce that a total of 21,534 non-traditional movable assets will become available to facilitate loans using these properties for the fiscal year under review. Yeah. Formalization of business, Madam Speaker, carries significant benefits such as easier access to capital and the ability to participate in government capacity building program. We thank the International Labour Organization for the support provided through the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, in the amount of $10.9 million for the formalizing of operators in the Jamaica Agricultural and Fisheries Project which successfully, Madam Speaker, formalized 100 farmers and fisher folks and enhanced their business management skills. With the successful completion of this pilot, JCDC, Madam Speaker, stands ready to expand the program in Jamaica to work with the ILO and to implement a similar program across the region. So, Madam Speaker, through capacity building support program provided by JBDC, 155 MSMEs were able to access funding in the amount of 95.8 million through grants, lines of credit, and the Development Bank of Jamaica technical vouchers of assistance and the Go Digital program. Madam Speaker, the JBDC is well advanced in implementing the essential oil incubator which will provide manufacturing capacity and position Jamaica to tap into the growing lucrative industry. 
During the financial year 2021-22, the JBDC built out the facility, procured the equipment to fully establish a 2,800 square foot incubator. Market research has been completed to identify the essential oils that will be produced. Additionally, Madam Speaker, we have engaged the supporting partners and stakeholders to finalize the project component and to ensure the success of this incubator. The incubator, Madam Speaker, will be operationalized in the second quarter of this fiscal year. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we recognize that a significant portion of our MSMEs are headed or managed by females. And we are moving to address the long-standing and unique challenges faced by our women-owned business in Jamaica. In this regard, in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports, Minister Grange, and with the support of the United Women, Nations Women, we continue to implement the Women Entrepreneurship Program, WES. Under this project, Madam Speaker, in 2021 and 2022, we provided capacity building and financing to 10 women-owned businesses. Madam Speaker, I'd like to recognize two MSMEs that have benefited from the collaboration with JBDC. Joni Bale Morgan of Morgan's Creek and Carl Sharp of Chocolore, who graduated from the JDC, JBDC Accelerator Program a six-month intensive development program jointly funded by JBDC and the Development Bank of Jamaica. Both are relatively new business owners. One, a young female entrepreneur, and the other, a retired engineer, whose businesses have grown way beyond, Madam Speaker, their own expectation with the assistance of JBDC. Despite the challenges of the economic condition over the last two years, and who exhibit the talent, innovation, and resilience of the Jamaican people. As we continue to focus on building resilience of the MSB sector, we have considered that during the pandemic, many were unable to move their business to the digital space as they were constrained by lack of capacity and access to capital investment in digital technology and products and services. With this in mind, Madam Speaker, the Ministry has engaged the European Union delegation to Jamaica and the Planning Institute of Jamaica to design a digital transformation support program for MSMEs. This is an important component of a broader European Union program for Jamaica, which will include education, and the ICT sector. The Digital Transformation Support Program, which is under the development for MSME, has three components, Madam Speaker. Digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation. Madam Speaker, my technical team is working closely with the European Union delegation and the PIOJ to have the project implemented in the 23-24 financial year. We express our gratitude to them for this special support as well as their continued assistance to the MSME sector. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, the Ministry continues to capitalize on digitalization as a key tool to facilitate trade. As such, we continue in our efforts to provide fully automated services that will enable a single portal for access to the service of all our cross-border re regulatory agencies. I am pleased, Madam Speaker, to report with respect to the Jamaica Single Window for Trade, JSWIFT to date, four agencies have been fully onboarded to the platform. An additional two agencies are partially onboarded, and a further six agencies are to be immediately onboarded during the financial year 2022-23. Since transaction commenced on the JSWIFT platform, Madam Speaker, over 62,000 applications have been processed, 
of this amount, 36,000 or 58 percent, were processed during this fiscal year 2021-2022. The Jamaica Information Portal, JTIP, has become one of the primary tools through which we can disseminate transparent and predictable trade information. Since its launch in 2019, Madam Speaker, visitors to the site have grown to over 13,000 per year. And as of April 22, 34,500 users from 179 countries have in fact visited this site. Madam Speaker, to date, 4,082 certificates of origin have been issued by the Trade Board Limited as a part of Jamaica's push for ease of doing business. The application and issuance of certificate of origin has been transferred to the digital space. This will allow traders and exporters to benefit from application and use of electronic certificates. With the approval of CARICOM Custom Committee on January 1st, 2022, the Trade Board launched a three-month pilot to use these electronic certificates and is now in the extension phase of that pilot. Madam Speaker, we are improving the ease of doing business to enhance the efficiency and productivity in Jamaica. <laughs> Madam Speaker, in our ongoing effort to facilitate the ease of trade, we are pleased to announce that with the support of the World Bank Group, we have finalized inspection matrices and protocols to improve efficiency in our physical inspection of commodities at the borders by our four border regulatory agencies. These entities have signed memorandum of understanding to permit these border regulatory agencies to share inspection responsibilities. Madam Speaker, this will result in a reduction in time and cost for border and documentary compliance for trade and ultimately will facilitate greater efficiency at the borders for both our regulators and our traders. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, I now turn to the new Trade Act. The changes brought by liberalization of the international trading systems allied to the rapid pace of globalization requires that Jamaica's law substantially adjust to a modern approach to trade and international best practices. In its current form, Madam Speaker, the Trade Act 1955, what? before our independence, does not do so, presenting a need for an overarching repeal and replacement. So as we build the resilience for trade and export, Madam Speaker, the Ministry will undertake a review of the existing legislation and its repeal and replacement. It is envisaged that the new Trade Act will contain provisions that support a trading environment that is aligned with trade facilitation measures, which in turn will facilitate the ease, predictability, and transparency when trading. So unlike, unlike, Madam Speaker, the current Trade Act, which focuses solely on trading goods, the new Trade Act will include regulatory environments for trading in services and contain provisions that support initiatives related to trade, agriculture, and agricultural-based exports. So Madam Speaker, as we execute our trade facilitation reform program to increase our trade and export, we have engaged the Planning Institute of Jamaica's Foundation for Competitiveness and Growth Project to support and to undertake several key initiatives in 2022-23 financial year, including developing an enterprise risk management framework for border regulatory agencies, enhancing and upgrading the trade port, port, um, portal and review the legislation and regulations governing border regulatory agencies. These enhancements, Madam Speaker, will provide accessible trade regulatory information, modernize the trade legislation, reduce the risk for regulators and traders, and further expand coordination of border regulatory services 
which will ultimately create efficiencies in our cross-border trade. Madam Speaker, as the ministry continues to represent the offensive and defensive interests of our manufacturers in regional and international arena, I am pleased, Madam Speaker, to report today that we have successfully negotiated the increase in the common external tariff, CET, for condensed milk, which is currently listed on the list of commodities ineligible for conditional duty exemption to a maximum tariff rate of 30 to 35 percent for all member states for extra regional e imports. We have successfully, Madam Speaker, secured the approval of the Council for Trade and Economic Development quoted for the suspension of CET and Minister Vaz, I don't think he's here, for nine types of renewable energy and energy efficient items. And the application of a rate of 0% for a period of two years beginning January 1st, 2022. Madam Speaker, we continue to vigorously represent the interests of our sector in the CARICOM region. Madam Speaker, ensuring a stable, competitive, and transparent environment to increase commercial activities and sustain businesses continues to be a critical objective of this ministry. To this end, the ministry undertook several programs and initiatives to manage the domestic business and commercial environment to ensure that it operates efficiently and balances the interests of all stakeholders. One such initiative, Madam Speaker, is the establishment of the National Quality Policy Council, which I chair, to advance implementation of the national quality policy, which will position Jamaica as a standard-led, market-driven economy, supported by a culture of quality to achieve global co competitiveness and consumer protection. Madam Speaker, in this regard, the national infrastructure, national quality infrastructure under the ministry's portfolio continues to play a critical role to ensure the safety of all Jamaicans and our visitors. In the last fiscal year, through the Bureau of Standards, BSJ, 68 new standards were completed and promulgated, Madam Speaker. 43 service standards were developed along with 25 product standards covering a wide range of areas, including building construction, health informatics, organizational resilience, and environmental management. Madam Speaker, critical amongst the standards launch were the revised standards for all our concrete blocks and ready mix cement, two standards for transportable gas containers for inspection, retesting, and use of transportable containers. Yes. And with a focus on agribusiness, Madam Speaker, in the 22-23 financial year, the Bureau of Standard will provide critical support to cannabis, castor beans, bamboo, hot pepper, cassava, through product testing, standard development, calibration, training, research, and profile development, capacity building, and value chain development. That's right. That's right. Madam Speaker and members of this Honorable House, I am pleased to report that the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce that I have the privilege of representing here today is the Ministry to complete the ISO 9001-2015 Stage 1 Certification Audit. We are now working, Member Hilton, we are now working steadfastly to complete Stage 2 Audit by July 2022. And when this is completed, we will become the first ministry in Jamaica to be so certified. We are going, Madam Speaker, where no other ministry in Jamaica has gone before. Amen. 
as the ministry mandate, <laughs> as the ministry mandated to lead the charge for certification among public sector bodies. To date, the ministry has supported the certification of 19 public sector agencies. An additional seven entities have completed stage one and two certification audits. A further eight entities have started and have completed stage one certification audit and are preparing for stage two audit. Nine other entities are at various stages of implementation of the standards and we are preparing for standard one audit. These 15 agencies should attain ISO 9015 certification in the 2022 financial year. Madam Speaker, this government, led by the most honorable Andrew Holness, is leading the way in certification. I therefore encourage, I know John Mafood is in the audience, I therefore encourage our private sector, which is the engine of growth to implement quality management systems in your operations, and in doing so, improve your global competitiveness, increase trade, and satisfy our citizens with a quality business environment. Madam Speaker, I turn to the topic of accreditation. We are extremely Madam Speaker, an extremely critical element in Jamaica quality infrastructure is accreditation. In January 2021, the Jamaica National Agency for Accreditation, JANAC, launched, Madam Speaker, a pre-accreditation program called PAP for unaccredited medical and testing laboratories and point-of-care testing providers to obtain approval for COVID testing services. But, Madam Speaker, this is a signature accomplishment led by this ministry, as this is the first locally adapted program designed by JANUC. The first, enabling entities to be added to the government's published list of COVID testing providers whilst they transition towards full accreditation. Under this program, JANUC verifies and validates technical competencies of COVID-19 testing facilities to provide accurate, res accurate results to our consumers. Since the launch of PAP, Madam Speaker, JANAC has awarded 56 pre-accreditation approval certificates for COVID-19 testing. Madam Speaker, we must recognize, we must recognize and applaud the role of JANAC as played in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic as the agency steadfastly remains a partner with the Ministry of Health and Wellness in managing the pandemic. Madam Speaker, Jamaica is open for business. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, our Jamaican people are resilient, and we all know that. In a year when this country, like the rest of the world, still grapples with the COVID-19 pandemic, the Company Office of Jamaica reported an increase in the number of companies registering business names and an increase in the number of registering companies. During the financial year under review, the COJ, the COJ, Madam Speaker, registered 16,800 business names and 4,983 companies. These numbers, Madam Speaker, represents an increase of 17.59% and 16.56% respectively compared to the previous year. And this is in a pandemic year, Madam Speaker. There was also a 54% increase in the use of the electronic business registration form to register business names and a 40% increase in the company registration compared to the previous year. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, we must applaud our Jamaicans for their indomitable entrepreneurial spirit. During the financial year, Madam Speaker, 
the ministry and several agencies on our portfolio maintain focus on consumer protection and empowerment. The Food Storage and Prevention of Infestation Division continue to ensure the safety and wholesomeness of our food, feed, entering commerce. To this end, the division conducted 12,559 inspections, Madam Speaker, and 647 disinfestation operations and executed 3,647 laboratory analysis. In its continued thrust, Madam Speaker, to ensure health and safety of Jamaicans, the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority conducted 6,276 inspections on our ports of entry and in markets and importers' warehouses, a total of 9,199 weight and measuring devices used in trades were verified for accuracy. So during the financial year, the value of goods withdrawn from sale by NCRA for consumer protection, Madam Speaker, amounted to approximately $10 million. We recall funds that were a safety hazard and detained and withdrew from sale 68,700 substandard concrete blocks and over 13,000 liters of substandard petroleum products valued at more than $2 million. In collaboration with the NCRA, Madam Speaker, the BSJ established the energy efficiency and labeling program to test appliances and generate efficiency labels to assist the consuming public in realizing the benefits of energy efficiency. This is largely possible, Madam Speaker, due to the BSJ newly minted energy efficiency laboratory, which I am extremely proud to report, Madam Speaker, has been designated, my colleagues, designated a center of excellence in the CARICOM region. Jamaica, Madam Speaker, is therefore open for business. The Consumer Affairs Commission continues its consumer awareness and activities and during the financial year, conducted 51 price surveys examining groceries, agricultural and petroleum products, hardware items, school tech book, books, banking fees, sanitation, hygiene products, as well as approved sites for COVID testing, Madam Speaker. The CAC fulfilled its responsibilities to increase consumer awareness during the financial year by directly sensitizing more than 38,000 consumers. And in continuing its strong advocacy for consumer protection, Madam Speaker, the Consumer Affairs Commission handled 1,695 complaints and resolved 1,361, resulting in a resolution rate of greater than 80%. The Commission, Madam Speaker, was able to secure nearly 16 million in compensation and refund on behalf of aggrieved consumers. I am pleased to report to Madam Speaker that beyond the, con the performance of the CSC Protection Tribunal, they adjudicated a case and awarded $7.6 million to the consumer, the largest ever compensation granted by the Tribunal. We are protecting consumer, Madam Speaker. Significant efforts was maintain and encourage competition in the provision of goods and services, Madam Speaker, during the year under review. In this regard, the Fair Trading Commission resolved 80% of the anti-competitive cases and accrued more than $6.3 billion in benefits from market investigation. Madam Speaker, we are ensuring the safety of our consumers. Madam Speaker, I turn now to a topic, the topic of investment promotion. Jamaica remains ready for business and in keeping with our investment promotion objectives, we continue to embark on targeted initiatives to increase investment. For the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2022, JAMPRO, our investment promotion arm, facilitated the start of 42 investment projects across sectors 
23 of which were new products by local, projects by local and international investors, and 19 were expansion projects from existing investors. Madam Speaker, I am proud to say Jamaica is open for business. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, Minister Hill will present more details of Jampro's investment and trade promotion activities and plans when he speaks in the Senate. I now turn to an important conference, Madam Speaker, as a part of our investment promotion strategy. Jamaica will host the World Free Zone Organization 8th Annual International Conference and Exhibition from June the 13th to the 17th of 2022 at the Montego Bay Conference Center. This, Madam Speaker, is a significant event as it will be the first time that this conference will be hosted in the Caribbean. It will also be the largest event to be held in Jamaica since the start of the pandemic. And we expect approximately 700 visitors to be in Jamaica for four days of conference and exhibition. The conference, Madam Speaker, is a pivotal opportunity for Jamaica to showcase the country as an ideal location for special economic zone investments, and we anticipate a significant injection to our tourism destination recovery plan. Right. Madam Speaker, in partnership with the world, we are building a strong, resilient, and prosperous country. <laughs> Madam Speaker, during the financial year, the ministry focused on developing and sustaining global competitive industry structures. Yes. The cannabis industry continues to play a key part in the development, given its significant cultural significance to Jamaica, Madam Speaker, and the potential to contribute significantly to the Jamaican economy. So in moving to reset cannabis industry in June 2021, the ministry established a cannabis development task force, which I chair. Yes. This task force will shortly present recommended national policies and strategies for a viable and sustainable medical cannabis industry. The key areas of focus includes greater inclusiveness, meeting emerging consumer demands, and promoting ongoing investors' interests, effectively competing in the global cannabis space, and diminishing the supply to the illicit ganja market. In January 2022, 21, the task force completed a comprehensive action with key initiatives to support the industry, and importantly, Madam Speaker, to ensure econ economic inclusions of our small-scale and traditional cannabis farmers. The industry is demanding that we aggressively implement the action plan in 22-23 financial year. And Madam Speaker, we are responding decisively to take our cannabis industry to higher heights. Yeah. Additionally, Madam Speaker, we will shortly present recommendations to the cabinet to execute two projects to include small scale and traditional farmers in the regulated industry. These projects are in the advanced design stage, and Minister Hill will elaborate on these as well as the plans to further develop the industry in its contribution to the state of the nation debate in the Senate. Madam Speaker, the sky is therefore the limit for our Jamaica cannabis industry. Hi. Another key sector is our craft industry. Madam Speaker, the global arts and craft market was valued at $41.59 billion in 2020 and is expected to reach $54 billion by 2026. We are aware, Madam Speaker, that a significant amount of our craft is imported from other countries. This trend must shift towards locally produced craft. 
this in mind, Madam Speaker, the Ministry. Madam Speaker, the, the members allotted time has been expired. I move that it be extended by 15 minutes to allow him to conclude his presentation. <laughs> May it please the Madam Speaker. Uh, members, there is a visit of a state official here and our time limits are tight this evening and we are having an excellent presentation but I'm going to ask the minister to stick to 15 minutes, please. Those in favour? Those against? Minister, you may use the last 15 minutes as wisely as you can. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And thank you to my colleagues as well. Madam Speaker, last year we announced that we are placing particular emphasis on bamboo yes. as a versatile, environmentally friendly commodity that's, that's with right. considerable global potential. To this end, the Ministry continues to work towards establishing a bamboo industrial demonstration facility with funding for the project provided through a bilateral partnership between the People's Republic of China and the Government of Jamaica. We expect, Madam Speaker, to have full project approval by August 2022. This facility, Madam Speaker, will be the first of its kind in the Caribbean. And you have a lot of bamboo. And it will right. be so east St. Mary. <laughs> and West Rural. <Rua. laughs> Madam Speaker, as we work to increase support to the bamboo industry, we have engaged the Ministry, Minister Charles, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, to recognize bamboo as an industrial crop under the Agriculture Produce Act. This will allow, Madam Speaker, for the provision of technical support and extension services for, the crit for this critical new industrial crop. So, Madam Speaker, the manufacturing sector is the largest of the goods producing sector with significant growth potential for Jamaica. And John knows that. Domestic export earning increased, Madam Speaker, by 10% in 2021 to $1.28 billion. The increase was due to a rise in export from manufacturing and agriculture industries. With manufacturing increasing, Madam Speaker, and listen to this number, Madam Speaker, manufacturing increasing by 30.8%. Yeah, yeah. We are encouraged by this performance, and the Ministry continues to implement the National Manufacturing Five-Year Growth Strategy to further enhance the business environment for manufacturing to increase employment, foreign direct investment, export sales, and foreign exchange earning. Madam Speaker, an important component in manufacturing expansion and trade is our ability to defend our local manufacturing sector. The Anti-Dumping and Subsidies Commission, Madam Speaker, continues to engage with industries affected by imports. And two industries are currently at various stages of the complaint filing process towards seeking trade remedies. The Ministry also supported manufacturing by processing, Madam Speaker, six to one requests for suspension of CET to allow for temporary derogation from applicable rates of duty on inputs for the manufacturing sector for goods valued at more than $490 million. Madam Speaker, we also facilitated interregional trade with CARICOM by processing 31 safeguard requests for the manufacturing sector to use extra regional material in the manufacturing processes and for exports of finished products to CARICOM territories without being subjected to the import duties and under restriction. To the CARICOM Community Secretary, Madam Speaker, the region is undertaking a comprehensive review of the CET and CARICOM rules of origin to ensure that these trade in instruments are modernized to meet the realities of current regional and international trade. My Ministry, Madam Speaker, continues to work with our private sector and our public sector partners to ensure that our trading interests are represented in this review. Madam Speaker, the team at the Ministry is fully committed and stands ready to work with our private sector to utilize trade instruments 
to support market access and to increase trade across the region. Another key activity undertaken in the support of the manufacturing sector in the financial year 2021-22 was the continued administration of the Productive Input Relief, commonly known as PIR, for the manufacturing sector to allow for duty-free importation of goods intended for direct use in the manufacturing process. During the financial year, we processed 114 applications, Madam Speaker, and of this amount, 38 represented new applications and 74 were renewals. To date, 568 manufacturers are benefiting from this regime. So, Madam Speaker, we recognize the dynamic nature of our manufacturing, that it requires continuous revision of our supporting framework. And as such, we will review this incentive arrangement to advance the recommendations to expand the regime to consider technological development and diversification in manufacturing because, Madam Speaker, industry is 4.0 now. Yes. Madam Speaker, as we continue to foster resilience in our industries in the last financial year, we place particular emphasis on creating a robust ecosystem for intellectual property in Jamaica to enable Jamaicans to benefit from their creative works. So under the guidance of the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, JIPO, Jamaica became part, Madam Speaker, to three international treaties in the last financial year. And I know Tony is so happy about this. Yeah. The Patent Corporation Treaty related specifically to patents, the Hague Arrangement concerning the International Deposit of Industrial Designs related to designs, and the Madrid Protocol related to trademarks. The member from West St. Andrew. Uh, All right, Gigi. All right, Gigi. These treaties, these treaties, Madam Speaker, these treaties, Madam Speaker, will allow for filing for protection in the designated country and enable greater ease of international registration. This, Madam Speaker. This, Madam Speaker, is a tremendous achievement for Jamaica and is a big deal. Considering, considering, Madam Speaker, this was in the making for 17 years and we have now finally accomplished this. Madam Speaker, JIPO has completed a significant project to strengthen the intellectual property ecosystem, to improve the business climate in Jamaica, to allow enterprises to use intellectual property assets, which includes their patents, their trademarks, their industrial designs, and copyright as collateral. We thank our development partners for the support provided to execute this project. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker and members, Madam Speaker and members of this honourable house, we are changing the game. We are changing the game. Madam Speaker, let me take a moment to recognise the contribution of our agencies and our leaders in international arena because sometimes we don't. September, you We are that Jaipo. JIPO has been selected to chair Currently. the Intergovernmental Committee on Intellectual Property and Genetic Resources, Traditional Knowledge and Folklore. Amen. JIPO's Executive Director, Ms. Lily Claire Bellamy, yes. will start her two-year term this month. And Madam Speaker, and Madam Speaker, Tell us about the and again. Madam Speaker, and will be, will be the first female to hold this key position. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, and other agency, the anti doping and Sub Substance Commission, has come to international attention and has been singled out, Madam Speaker, by officials of the World Trade Organization as a model among similar authorities in small countries. Yeah. 
the executive director, Ms. Andrea Marie Dawes, has been invited, Madam Speaker, to serve as an expert, expert. on several dispute settlement panels between WTO members, where she has been leading multiple multidisciplinary teams of WTO experts and members of the arbiter right across the world. Madam Speaker, we congratulate both these leaders on their appointment, which helps to underscore Jamaica's international reputation for astute and skilled leadership in different sectors. Yes. 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 As the Ministry enhances its focus on services, we will undertake the development of the Jamaica National Service Policy and Implementation Plan to provide a cohesive and comprehensive framework to enable Jamaican service providers to participate fully in the CARICOM single market and economy, Madam Speaker. The Green Paper was tabled in this Honourable House before the end of September 2022-23 financial year. Jamaica, therefore, Madam Speaker, continues its robust representation of the service sector in the region. And on March 2022, Jamaica participated in the 98th Special Meeting of Coated for the regional service sector, which approved three of the seven draft regional subsector strategies and implementation plans, namely the professional service and single registration for professionals, tourism services, and postal career services. For the period 2022 to 2026, as well as the draft COVID service sector strategy, for the period 2022 to 2024. Madam Speaker, legislation. Yes. I'm pleased to announce yes. that the 2021-2022 financial year, the ministry had a robust legislative agenda and completed several legislative amendments during the financial period. As a result, of the limit of public gathering occasioned by the disaster risk management provision, the Cooperative Society Amendment Regulations 2021, the Friendly Society's Amendment Regulation 2021, were promulgated, Madam Speaker. Similarly, the Company's Amendment 2021 was enacted in November 2021 with amendments made to allow companies to hold electronic and hybrid annual general meetings these amendments were welcome and timely as they allow flexibility of business continuity That's during right. the COVID period of restriction right. and true. for future such restrictions, Madam Speaker. The Agriculture Loan Societies and Approved Organization Regulation 2021 was passed by affirmative resolution in December 10, 2021 to strengthen the legislative framework of the 2017 Act, particularly in relation to the registration and regulation of agriculture loan societies as well as certification of approved organization under the registrar of corporate societies. On, March of, on June the 1st, Madam Speaker, 2021, I was, as well as my colleague, privileged to be in this house as the Trademark Amendment Act 2021 was passed, leading to its passage in the upper house. This leads me to address Jamaica's ascension to the Madrid Protocol, Madam Speaker, and today I announce to this Honorable House that we acceded to the Madrid Protocol on March the 27th, 2022. This protocol is an international system for obtaining trademark protection in a number of countries and all regions using a single application. So, Madam Speaker, in the 2022-23 financial year, the Ministry continues to pursue a vigorous legislative agenda which includes over 20 pieces of legislation amendments. Priorities will be given to the amendment to the Companies Act, beneficial ownership, to strengthen the disclosure of information relating to beneficial owners of companies in accordance with the Financial Action Task Force recommendations to counter money laundering and terrorism finances to encourage investment and growth within the economy. Madam Speaker, the Insolvency Amendment Bill, Draft Bill, which is to improve the business environment by creating greater efficiency in the operation of the Act to allow for the rehabilitation of businesses where possible and to prevent insolvency. 
We will also, Madam Speaker, prioritize the FTCCA merger, dangerous drug cannabis import, export, transit, and transit shipment, the dangerous drug cannabis license interim amendment. Madam Speaker, in concluding, Jamaica's quest to be the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business is central to the operation of this ministry. That's true. Yes. We have been good stewards, Madam Speaker, as we work toward our sustainable development goals and nurtured our environment into one that is resilient, sustainable, and prosperous. We have showed the world, Madam Speaker, that the pandemic could not stop us. So as Jamaica reset and recover, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Jamaica's business ministry, of which I'm proud to be a part, will continue to foster an enabling business and trade environment, open new doors for manufacturing and export, reignite and support entrepreneurial spirit, increase demands for Jamaican goods and services, both current and new markets, and promote local and foreign direct investment, increasing digitalization services to improve on the efficiency access thus enabling the prosperity for all Jamaicans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, we are ready for business. We are ready for business with a number of legislative amendments. We are ready for business with retooling and digitalization of our MSMEs. Madam Speaker, we are ready for business by attracting quality investment and improving our export markets and developing craft industries and infrastructure. We are ready for business with protecting and monetizing our intellectual properties yes. for Jamaicans. Madam Speaker, we are moving ahead to lead the world in utilizing movable assets and collateral, developing standards with appropriate certification to world class, developing sustainable industries, and protecting and empowering our consumer. Madam Speaker, we have reset for recovery, and indeed, we are ready for business. Madam Speaker, thank you very much, and may God bless Jamaica, land we love. Uh, Madam, very good. Madam, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I'm sure that the, the Honourable House uh, is indeed enriched by the two very excellent presentations today, and certainly the the what shall I maiden presentation of the the member from Southeast uh, Saint Mary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I now beg to move that the sectoral debate be suspended until uh, May 25th at 2 p.m. May 24th, I'm sorry, at 2 p.m. May it please you, Madam Speaker. The question before the House is that the sectoral debate be suspended until the next sitting of the House, Tuesday, the 24th of May, at 2 p.m. sharp. Those in favor? Those against? The eyes have it. This house is now adjourned. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I beg to move that this honorable house be, a, be adjourned. <laughs> Um, oh. um, it is not intended to do any further business for the day. And Members. consequently, Madam Speaker, I beg to move for the adjournment until uh, Tuesday, May 24th at 2 p.m. at the George William Gordon House. Will I will make haste slowly. 
The motion is that the sectoral debate be suspended until next Tuesday, the 24th of May. Those in favor? The ayes have it. The adjournment. I am asking members, the question is that the House do now adjourn until next Tuesday, 2 p.m., the 24th of May. Those in favor? Those against? The ayes have it. This House is now adjourned until Tuesday the 24th. And members, please be reminded that Monday the 23rd is Labor Day. All members of the House, be notified of Monday the 23rd, Labor Day.